Hi, welcome to this latest webcast with Sudhir Katiyar, live from India, discussing our Brick Kiln project in association with Preas. And Sudhir, first and foremost, it's a delight to have you with us at Union Solidarity International. And I understand there's been some exciting developments over the last couple of weeks in relation to the unionisation drive. If you would like to tell everybody about that, Sutia. Thank you, Andrew. See, last two weeks we had been working in uh, in the uh, outskirts of uh, the city of Hyderabad, which is the state capital and a big uh, metropolis town uh, in India, in South India, uh, a town with a population of around six million plus people. So the bricks are the basic building material and most of the Indian towns, large towns, are surrounded by brick kilns that supply material for construction activity in the towns. So Hyderabad has lots of brick kilns for it and I would say roughly there would be around 20,000 workers engaged in the brick kiln production in the outskirts of Hyderabad. So, so most of these workers... Could you just repeat that figure, suit here, how many workers are involved? Yeah, there would be at least 20,000 workers, 20,000, two zero okay, thank workers you. outside Hyderabad working in these brick kilns. Mm. And most of these brick workers, they are seasonal migrants from the state of Odisha. And they migrate with their families, with their wives, with their children. The whole family comes and uh, comes in the months of October, November, December. And they stay on and work in these brick kilns. Most of them take an advance before coming and in Odisha, actually Brickin workers in all over India are almost, can be classified as bonded workers in the sense that they start with an advance and then they have to stay and work, keep working till the advance gets paid off. Yes. So they are bonded to the work site for the whole season. They cannot leave of their own will. That is the case with the Brickin workers in Hyderabad, around Hyderabad also. But the situation in Hyderabad is, I would say, pretty bad. It's almost the worst in the whole country. In the sense that the workers, they have no concept of wages at all. They only take an advance, they start working, and then they go back at the end of the season. So there's no concept of wages. If you ask a worker what is his wage rate, he will not be able to tell you. What he can tell you is the amount of money that he receives for food, buying food every week. And even this food expense, that's a big bone of contention because even just food expense is not sufficient. It is tied to the production that the worker makes. So the owners are constantly pressuring, pressurizing the workers to put in more and more hours. And workers end up working like uh, up to 16 hours a day, which is very inhuman. Round the clock they work. Uh, and they don't receive even enough food expenses. So last year also there was mobilization in this cluster where we had done mobilization in this uh, Dundigal is one of the clusters around Hyderabad, where uh, we can in large numbers. So last year also we had a mobilization. Uh, workers said gone on a strike for three days. And it has resulted in a lot of uh, activity with the government. The government had also woken up to the wages. Wages are, minimum wages are being paid. So this year again, we, uh, uh, this is the second year. So we made a lot of efforts in the intervening period also. We, we mobilized the workers. In the source areas in Odisha, state of Odisha, where we did a lot, lot of meetings. We also did a lot of mobilization in the city of Hyderabad. And in Hyderabad, we have been able to uh, get up good support from civil society. So, the large number of people have come out to support workers' struggle. Uh, interesting develop an interesting development this year has been involvement of students from Central University Hyderabad. Okay, we have got that. a very good group. We have got a very good, good group of students and faculty who were involved in the mobilization process and who, who, who helped out the, uh, our team to work with the workers. That's excellent. So that's, the, that's great yeah, news. Yeah. So, uh, and the meeting was held on 25th. It was very well attended. Almost 500 workers from the Brickfield surround Dundigal village, they came to participate in this meeting. Uh, this year, last year, after the public meeting, we are given call for a strike. So workers have stopped working. But this year, uh, uh, as a matter of strategy and also because of discussion with the solidarity group, 
we did not call for a strike on purpose because the group felt that we have to make more preparation before we go for a, 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 an extreme action like a strike. So we have not called for a strike at this juncture. Uh, we instead held a meeting. What we did was we 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 made the workers aware of the of the legal environment of the of the laws that have been enacted for their betterment, especially the Border Labour Act, which allows workers to leave at their will. You know the Border Labour Act in India. It allows worker to leave his work site even though he may have taken a large advance because you cannot force workers to work against an monetary advance taken by them. So it's a very revolutionary act and it's a very good act it's in conditions like this where workers are forced from far off areas and because of indebtedness they end up working at almost low wages. So we got a lot of these forms filled from workers. Their workers applied for uh, at least in the Border Labour Act and now we would be processing these forms and we are basically putting a pressure on the employers, on the government to improve our conditions and also to bring this fact before them, the, the conditions that prevail in the big things. Okay, that's a fantastic and, update, Sutia, and it's so pleasing to hear that at the union's first public meeting, 500 people turned out to hear of the the drive to encourage people to join the union but to make them aware of their legal rights. When we started this project, our involvement in this project with, your, with yourself and Preya Sutia, the objective was to try and unionise 7,000 workers within the brick kiln sector. How close do you think we are to uh, achieving that target, knowing how difficult the circumstances may be on the ground but for our listeners and viewers it would be great to hear about the progress that has been made to towards unionising 7,000 workers and also enabling workers to be aware of their rights and for their families to access social services such as schools and healthcare. Okay. See, in Hyderabad, uh, see the with the support that USA is giving us, we are working in two locations. One is in Hyderabad, in the district of, in the state of Andhra Pradesh. The other cluster is in the state of Rajasthan, in the Bhirwala Mandal, where mobilization work and was undertaken two months back in the month of December. And I updated you on the progress there also. At both these places, uh, we have applied for the session of trade union. Okay, so fantastic. the application has been submitted. Uh, we have not begun a formal membership drive yet, partly because it's best to get the union legally registered before we begin a formal membership drive. So we are waiting for the registration process to be completed and after that we will begin a, a formal membership drive. We will be, we'll be uh, collecting some donation and giving a receipt back and enrolling workers as the me formerly a member of the union. But we have begun work. And the work has definitely impacted a very large number of workers. For example, in the cluster of Dundigal, where we are, we, are, we, are, we are working now, in this cluster itself, where the meet, public meeting was, under, was held on 25th February, the number, number of workers would be something around 5,000 workers in this cluster itself. Okay. So, almost 10% of them came to this public meeting, and we have begun to make an impact, in the sense that the owners are more aware, owners are also now in informal discussions with us, they are, they are sharing their willingness, they are expressing their willingness to pay higher prices. But they are still to, we are still to achieve a formal agreement with them. But informally, they are willing to pay higher prices. Uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the report that I have sent to, I have given an instance where we, we negotiated directly with the brickle owner and he agreed to, ag agreed to pay minimum wages, yeah. which is like almost two times the wages that the workers are getting right now. So I would say that we have begun to make an impact already in the second year of operation. The formal membership drive is still, we have not launched it because of some legal, legal bottleneck basically. Yes, I mean, trade unions face the same legal challenges the world over. We have the same issues within the UK and in Ireland and in order to register trade union membership and collective bargaining and it just illustrates how there are many legal loopholes and barriers to prevent trade unions organising workers. But Sudhir, that's a fantastic update. 
And to hear that 10% of the workers attended a public meeting uh, in the areas that you're organising and educationally making people aware of their rights is such fertile ground for driving forward with the unionisation drive and encouraging people to take up union membership. But as you've already mentioned, because of the work that is getting done, employers are recognising the threat and are trying to encourage higher wage rises to perhaps dissuade people from joining trade unions but our efforts must not allow that to happen and that workers deserve more than what employers are prepared to give them. We've got to fight and earn the money and the crust that the workers deserve. So Tia, it just leaves me to thank you for your update and we look forward to the next one as we go forward with the unionisation drive on the ground and thank you very much for working with Union Solidarity International in this fantastic project that we are so pleased and proud to be associated with. And thank you very much, it's been great working with you, it's been great receiving the support and it's great to know that people are supporting us from such a large distance away, so it's been fantastic working with you. And uh, I also try to, you know, we have been discussing how can we bring on some workers to this forum. And probably I like to hear about that, the next meeting that we have, that we are able to get some workers actually to talk to you. Excellent, Sutia, that's fantastic. You have a good day wherever you are in India. I know you're travelling from state to state all the time. You've got a very busy life. Only, thank, only leaves me to thank you, comrade, and have a good day. Solidarity. Okay, I do. Have a good day, you too. Have a good day.